Today is Mother's Day in Australia, so I wanted to look back through my childhood photos, most of which were taken by my mum. When I hear stories about how other people got into photography, they often say how their mum or their dad or their grandparents or someone else in their life gave them a camera and showed them how to take photos. Well, I really don't have a story like that. However, photos did play a central role in my childhood. In our house, we had a bookcase and at the bottom of that bookcase, there was a cupboard where there was probably about a dozen big, thick family albums full of photos. We lived in the inner east side of Brisbane and in and around the house there is a number of set photo locations where mum would usually grab a camera and march you out to and you had to line up with your sister and pose for a photo. The dining room was one of the favoured locations. It sounds very posh that we had a dining room but it was just a room in between the lounge and the kitchen and in this room there was a table where we had meals. In the corner there was a record player, we had about 30 or 40 LPs and it was also usually the place where we had a Christmas tree and so this was one of the favoured places for mum when she grabbed a camera she told you to stand up you know in the corner and you know if we had a special outfit on or if we, it was Christmas or a birthday we'd hold a present and this was one of the, the, the favoured locations for photos in the house. Other photo locations include the front yard, the neighbour's front yard, the backyard, the front steps, the hallway and loads of other places. Most of the early photos are all square, so this would suggest that we had an Instamatic sort of camera which produced these kind of square prints. The next lot of photos from the early to mid 80s are this odd sort of shaped rectangle and they're quite small prints. Now I have a memory of us having a disc camera in the house, it's the only camera I can remember from my childhood. I remember standing in the dining room and my mum having this gold and black shiny Kodak camera and you know lighting us up for a photo and all of the prints from the early to mid 80s are this small sort of odd shaped and that would sort of tie in with the aspect ratio of a Kodak disc camera. Towards the late 80s and early 90s we had the regular 6x4s so I think mum must have changed camera. I did ask my mum if she could remember the disc camera a few weeks ago and she couldn't which I thought at first was kind of surprising she couldn't remember it but then again I guess it was 40 years ago. Immediately after that, she just sort of blurted out, I didn't take many photos, which I thought was kind of odd because she did. Maybe in comparison to today's parents who take thousands upon thousands of photos and videos on their iPhones of their kids every single year, no, we didn't have many photos. But I think compared to a lot of other families, we had a very comparable sort of set of family photos in albums. The other thing about my mum saying that she didn't take many photos was this. My mum is a very modest person, so perhaps she didn't think that her taking photos was significant, but it absolutely was. The very act of having a camera, loading the film in the camera, lining up your kids and taking a, a photo when they were happy or on a special occasion or when they were dressed up is hugely significant. It means that someone loved you enough to want to take your photo and get it printed and put it in an album. Now my mum didn't take all the photos, my dad also took photos. But the thing that dad was interested in was mostly video cameras and so in the 80s we quite often rented video cameras and uh, took family footage on those. But more about that in another video. The photos taken by my mum were mostly sort of relegated to the family albums in the bookcase. Most of the photos we had up on the wall were when mum dragged us to the photo studio once a year, pixie photos, and we had a photo in this studio and, and they were put up in frames. But the funny thing is this, I actually treasure the photos that mum and dad took way more than the studio photos. For example, in this photo here, it's a photo of me in the neighbour's front yard having my photo taken in front of some nice sort of pretty flowers. Looking down the neighbour's house into the backyard, there's this huge tree in the back garden and I'm thinking, what was that tree? I can't remember that. And then all of a sudden the memories flood back. Our neighbour, as well as having a beautiful vegetable patch and these beautiful amazing flowers, our neighbour had a pine tree uh, in their backyard and I remember some of the pine cones used to fall into our yard and I remember one Christmas we, my sister and I gathered a few of the pine cones but we didn't have enough and we knocked on their door and asked for permission to go around and collect the rest of the pine cones in their yard and we painted them red and green and white for Christmas. So it's funny how a photo taken you know 40 odd years ago can have these amazing memories, things that I'd forgotten about. 
A lot of the time parents do things for their kids that they may not think is significant, but they really are. And the funny thing as a parent is you never know which things you do will be significant and which ones won't be. Looking through these photos, I've come to realize a few things. The first thing is that family photos don't have to be perfect to be amazing. Quite often the photos from my childhood are perhaps sometimes out of focus or the composition isn't great, but you know what, it really doesn't matter. And as someone into photography, I feel like sometimes I'm actually quite hard on myself. For example, this photo I took of my kids and our dog Marshall. I was really, really happy with this. It looks like all three of them are smiling and they look fantastic. And then when I looked at the scan up close, it's out of focus. I don't know what I was doing that day. It was an autofocus lens on a medium format camera. Perhaps I had shaky hands. Perhaps I had a slow shutter speed. I'm really not sure, but I was really angry at myself that I'd messed this up. And then a few weeks later on my daughter's laptop, she was showing me her homework and she had it as her wallpaper on her laptop. You know what? It really didn't matter that it was a little bit blurry at all. The second thing I realized by looking through these photos is my mum doesn't seem to be in a lot of them as the picture taker of the family. And perhaps that's something that I can sort of relate to myself. I'm usually the ones, one in the house taking a lot of the photos. And quite often my wife will say to me, you know, do you want a picture with the kids? And I'll say, no, I don't want one. I look like an idiot today or, or whatever, which is really silly. I, I should make more of an effort to get in photos with the kids. And the third thing is that you might see behind me, our walls are completely blank. We actually had the, the walls painted probably two years ago now, and we were thinking about selling the house, so we didn't put any pictures back up on the walls, which is really silly. You know, for someone who takes so many photos, I should totally make an effort to display more of my family photos. So happy Mother's Day, Mum. I love you. I hope you don't mind me using some of these old photos. I bet you never thought that you'd be an inspiration to my photography, but you definitely have been, and Dad as well. Dad took some of the photos. Both of you have been a huge influence on me in many, many ways. Also want to say a very happy Mother's Day to my beautiful wife, Sarah. We all love you so much. Thank you for all that you do for us. Sarah is usually pretty content to let me be behind the camera, although she does love taking photos on her iPhone. Usually the things that I won't take a photo of because I can't be bothered, Sarah will whip out her iPhone and take a lot of photos. So she has quite a collection of things that the kids have made or the kids have done. So it's really fantastic to have those a second source of memories in the house. So I'll finish up this video with some lovely film photos and Polaroid and Instax photos I took of the kids and Sarah. Happy Mother's Day.